In the summer of 1953, Dmitry Shostakovich set his sights on composing a new symphony. While there is evidence to suggest that he had started a 10th symphony earlier, one that he intended to craft as a capstone of the wartime trilogy he started with the 8th, the composer struggled with its composition and indicated that he would start over. Later, Shostakovich wrote to his close friend Isaac Glickman that he was dissatisfied with the second movement and claimed in a letter to a previous student, Kara Kareyev, that, quote, when creative potential is at its peak, then nothing disturbs composition. However, for the moment, I am dragging out the first movement with difficulty, and how it will fare beyond that, I don't know, end quote. The task of composing the 10th was significantly more arduous than most of Shostakovich's other symphonies, and with good reason. The great symphonic composer had avoided the genre since his second official disgrace in 1948, in which the party official Andrei Andreevich Zdanov and his lackeys accused Shostakovich and a host of other composers and cultural figures of what the state declared as formalism and other poorly defined aesthetic missteps with dire political implications. Glickman noted that with the political thaw following Stalin's death in 1953, Shostakovich, quote, felt able to resume work on large-scale orchestral works which would not be pure hostages to patriotic orthodoxy, end quote. And the tenth was not. However, as with so many of Shostakovich's works, rumors and theories of submerged political messages and explicit programmatic themes proliferated, and that Shostakovich littered the symphony with his musical monogram seemed to encourage speculation that this particular symphony held a deeper personal meaning. The most persistent of these theories is also the most dubious. Solomon Volkov, in his controversial book of purported memoirs of the composer entitled Testimony, claims that, quote, the second part, the scherzo, is a musical portrait of Stalin, roughly speaking, end quote. However, the noted Shostakovich scholar Laurel Fay, quote, found no corroboration that such a specific program was either intended or perceived at the time of composition and first performance, end quote. Maxim, the composer's son, also stated that this musical portrait was fictitious. Father never said it was a portrait of Stalin. He was recorded stating in a piece published in the Los Angeles Times calendar. Another programmatic theory has gained more currency in contemporary musical discourse. And while it is less political, it is no less scandalous. Two days after writing of his frustrations with the second movement to Glickman, Shostakovich wrote Elmira Nazarova, a 24-year-old pianist living in Baku, with a similar note, but to this he added that he had transcribed her name, Elmira, into musical pitches and incorporated this motto into the third movement of the symphony and linked it with his own pitch monogram. Shostakovich had fallen for her, judging by the 34 letters he wrote to her between 1953 and 1956. And while Nazirova remembers his infatuation as a fleeting and opportunistic event that she was a muse for the tenth and little more, Shostakovich must have had strong feelings. For the glorious horn melodies that carry her encoded name are some of the most stunning and arrestingly beautiful moments in the entire symphony. Following Stalin's death in March 1953, Shostakovich felt a new confidence to offer premieres of some shelved works, including the fourth and fifth string quartets, However, these were easily eclipsed by the premiere of the 10th Symphony in Leningrad on December 17, 1953, by the Leningrad Philharmonic Orchestra under Yevgeny Mravinsky. Despite the inevitable political aesthetic controversies, the 10th was a rousing success. Nine years after the premiere in Leningrad, Erich Leinsdorf led the Boston Symphony in its first performances of the score in October and November 1962, and again twice during the 1963 season. Seiji Ozawa conducted the work in 1980 and 1984. Andrew Davis, Kurt Sanderling, Bernard Heitink, and Antonio Papano led performances of it between 1988 and 2005. Heitink also conducted Shostakovich's 10th Symphony with the Tanglewood Music Center Orchestra at Seiji Ozawa Hall during the summer of 2006. That performance is commercially available on a double-disc collection of live recordings from that summer by the TMCO. The Russian maestro Vasily Petrenko and BSO assistant conductor Julian Querty will each take the baton to lead the 10th next on October 8th through 13th at Symphony Hall 
with the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Tickets are available online at bso.org and by calling Symphony Charge at 888-266-1200.